Hey everybody, so within the realm of regenerative injections, there are a wide variety of injections and sometimes patients are unsure what the differences between each of them are, when one might be more appropriate than others, and even sometimes physicians aren't fully aware of some of the subtle nuances that lie in between these different injections. And so the probably the two most common injections that I do in the regenerative world is gonna be prolotherapy and PRP. And so I wanted to spend a second to help talk you through how I think about when prolotherapy is gonna be a bit more indicated versus PRP. When we think about that question, a few things come to mind. The first thing is going to be what tissue are we treating and what pathology are we treating? And so what I mean by that is there's different tissues that we can treat with the regenerative injections. We can treat tendons, we can treat ligaments, we can treat nerves, we can treat joint spaces. Those are kind of the main tissues that we're gonna be treating, uh, also fat pads. Uh, and then on the other side, it's what's the pathology? Are we dealing with an acute inflammatory? Are we dealing with more of a chronic degenerative condition? Those are kind of the two big buckets that uh, we kind of put them into. But then there is also this kind of chronic degenerative plus inflammatory condition, which is gonna be things like osteoarthritis of a particular joint. We have the chronic degeneration of the cartilage, yet we still have inflammatory markers, TNF-alpha, IL-6, the matrix metalloproteinases that are present inside the knee joint that are inflammatory, but not the traditional inflammatory markers we think of like neutrophils. And so that's the first thing we want to think about. So when a patient comes in, if they are mainly dealing with a chronic degenerative condition, such as ligament laxity or tendinosis of a tendon or a ligament, both prolotherapy and PRP are going to be indicated. And then the degree of the degeneration is typically what's going to lean me towards one or the other. What I mean by that is this, if a patient comes in and they have a, they chronically sprain their ankle, so they chronically just roll that ankle, maybe they play basketball, baseball, some other sport, tennis, something like that, where they sprain their ankle quite a bit. There's no major tears, there's no major joint issues, it's mainly just that they have this ligament laxity in the ligament. Both prolotherapy and PRP are going to be effective for this patient, However, when we look at the invasiveness and the cost difference between the two, it's usually more cost effective to go down the route of prolotherapy treatments and do kind of one to two to three of those versus going to the PRP treatments. However, if the degeneration is pretty significant, so let's say, for example, we have severe degeneration in the supraspinatus tendon, it's been going on for a long time, there's fatty infiltration now in the tendon, there's some small partial tears, some micro tearing, in those, <coughs> excuse me, in those situations, it's going to be more beneficial long-term to look at the PRP side of things because the cost benefit ratio is gonna lean more towards the PRP. So we've kinda of got that thing there framed out. Now, when we look at the joint degeneration, so our osteoarthritis. So again, we've got this chronic degenerative yet acute inflammatory condition of the knee joint. And so the research shows us that both prolotherapy and PRP are going to be beneficial for osteoarthritis. A lot of the research has looked at the knee, so let's just keep it with the knee. Prolotherapy and PRP are both beneficial for pain and dysfunction in knee osteoarthritis. However, the research is pretty clear that PRP is a stronger treatment than prolotherapy. And so that is where we then bring into question what's the degree of the individual patient's osteoarthritis, pain, and dysfunction. 
When we start seeing things like grade three and grade four osteoarthritis, especially of the lateral compartment, which appears in the research and also clinically to be the more difficult to treat with regenerative injections, then I start to think of the higher therapy. So I start to recommend PRP over prolotherapy because it's a more severe condition and we need more than just the dextrose. We need to get the biological tissue, the platelets, the growth factors, uh, all those cytokines, things like that in the knee joint to help modulate the immune system and the immune component, the inflammatory component of inside the knee joint, which works very differently than just doing a dextrose prolotherapy solution. If a patient comes in and it's just a mild grade one, maybe even grade two osteoarthritis, then we can stick more towards the prolotherapy unless there's other things that are leaning us more towards uh, the PRP. Some patients will ask if we combine the two. So if we do prolotherapy and PRP in the same treatment, um, and currently the research is suggesting that if we use high concentrations of dextrose in the syringe with the PRP, we're actually damaging the PRP, causing it to lose its efficacy. And so we don't mix them in the same syringe. Traditionally or typically I don't do prolotherapy for the ligaments and then PRP for the joint spaces just because we know that the PRP also works for the ligaments and does work stronger. And so if we are already doing PRP for the joint, I'm gonna do PRP for the ligaments and tendons and the supporting structures around it just because we're, we're already doing it and I want the patient to, if they're paying for the PRP, to get the full effect of the PRP. Now there are some instances knee osteoarthritis being one of those where we can sometimes pre-treat with prolotherapy anywhere from three to five to two weeks before the PRP treatment. And again, there's some parameters that I'm looking for in the MRI, in the patient history, things like that, that make me lean more towards, I need to get dextrose in this knee joint before I go do the PRP, but we separate those treatments for the reason that the putting the, the dextrose in the PRP syringe, too much of that is gonna cause issues and decrease efficacy of the treatment. So to kind of bring this back around, sum this back up, prolotherapy and PRP have similar profiles in what they can treat. Prolotherapy tends to be a weaker, but I don't like using the term weaker because it is still a very strong, powerful therapy compared to the PRP, so PRP being stronger. There are some instances such as when we need some more inflammatory modulation, some immune system modulation, that the biologic injections like PRP are going to be more beneficial than the prolotherapy. But a big component of all of this that comes into play is patient finances. It's a less invasive therapy to do the prolotherapy versus the PRP, less time intensive, less supplies. And so because of that, prolotherapy is cheaper than PRP. And when we have patients who are paying cash for this, it's always something I'm thinking about. How can I maximize the cost they are spending? And so if I believe that we can get the amount of healing we need in two prolotherapy treatments versus two PRP treatments, then I'm going to recommend that we do the prolotherapy treatments because that's going to cost less for the patient. If I think that we need to do one to three PRP treatments because the, the extent of the damage is a lot and it's large, compared to doing five, six, seven, maybe eight prolotherapy treatments, then I'm gonna recommend the patient do the PRP treatments because the total cost is going to be less because we do less procedures. I hope that gives you some insight into what goes on in my brain when I'm having these conversations with patients in regards to which regenerative injection therapy we should be looking to utilize. Thanks.